In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service. On this we're keeping as the Feast of St Thomas. Uh, last week, uh, during last week, was the 20th anniversary of my ordination as a deacon. And uh, this week, tomorrow indeed, the Feast of St Thomas marks the 19th anniversary of my ordination as a priest. A wonderful occasion that happened up at St Andrews at Tywardreth, uh, and it really was a wonderful occasion. And I'm very grateful for the priestly ministry that I've been able to offer for the last 19 years. So today we keep the Feast of St Thomas, and let us start with a hymn. The saints were faithful unto death and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom for ever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing the Gloria.
So let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son, till word and sight convinced him, grant to us who have not seen that we also may believe, and so confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them and although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. St Thomas, Doubting Thomas, there is something about Thomas in all of us, I would hope. I would hope at times we have all had some courage to doubt. If we don't, how do we know the basis of our faith? How do we know that actually this is it all and, and it's all there? Because faith is about having the courage to have faith in something that we do not necessarily have that living proof. What we should do, what we should encourage ourselves to do is to look for those moments where God features in our lives, where God interacts in our lives. Where God comes amongst us or where those things happen. Many people will put things down to coincidence. And that's an easy cop-out. It isn't. It's important that we look and we think, that's God interfering, for want of a better word. Thomas needed physical proof with his eyes and his hands. And there will be people out there who will question those things. We've seen some of the most atrocities. Someone showed me yesterday a TikTok 
I don't follow TikTok, but a TikTok by Stephen Fry, who was talking about some of the horrible things that go on in the world. How can a God allow that to happen? Floods. We aren't puppets. We have free will. Floods. What impact is us on have, are we having on the environment that is creating floods? We all know that we hear this talk of global warming. We know that we do seem to be getting country um, warmer and our seasons seem to be totally out of sync. We had the driest June for many years. We've had lots of rain, and when we've had rain, it has really deluged down. What impact are we having on the world that's creating that? I remember when the tsunami happened. Uh, what was that? 17 years ago? 18 years ago, possibly? Someone said to me, how can a God allow that to happen? And I said this very thing, what, in, what impact are we having on the environment? But if God is in that, why can't they see God in the humanitarian help that's helping afterwards? I spoke last week about the war in Ukraine. Now, the thing with that is Putin has free will. He's not a puppet that God is working. We aren't puppets. We have free will. And so it is about working out where God interacts in our lives. That will give us the proof we need. We're not going to get proof like Thomas got proof. But have a look where God interacts in your life. And that will give you the proof that you need. Share that proof with others. Talk about your relationship with God. And as you talk about your relationship with God, other people hopefully will come to have a living, real relationship with God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ. And will feel fulfilled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Heavenly King, allow the Holy Spirit of truth to be our witness. Guide us with your never-ending love and compassion. Hear our prayers we bring before you. We pray for the Church, for the work of St. Joseph's mission, for our own ministries, let us share the gospel of love and hope at every opportunity that presents our way. Lord, in your mercy. The combination of high inflation and high interest rates, we pray for those who are struggling to afford to live a decent quality of life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the individuals that boarded the submarine to visit the wreck of the Titanic. May their families and loved ones be comforted and consoled by the Holy Spirit at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. As record-breaking temperatures have been observed in the seas around the UK and Ireland, we pray that any human-caused climate change can be rectified to ease and protect our climate system. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all students undertaking exams and looking forward to future opportunities. 
May their hard work be repaid with good results and excitement for the future ahead. Lord, in your mercy. This summer we pray for sunny special times with those we love and care about. Let us spread our love and joy, bringing happiness to those we meet. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those experiencing pain and discomfort, for those who are sick, including Margaret, Baby Lee, Helena, Pauline, Bill, Rachel, Anne, Mike, Sylvia, Melanie, Karen, Lynn and Marco. May they have hope and reassurance for better days ahead. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have been recently bereaved, for the families of Stan, Nigel, Mick, Julia, Len, Jeff and Sid. May the hope of the resurrection fill their grief, and may those who have died enjoy eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to remember that your Holy Spirit will be with us always. Amen. May the God of peace sanctify you, so he may so strengthen your hearts in holiness, that you may be blameless before him, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with the saints. The peace of the Lord be always with you. give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks Holy Father almighty and eternal God through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord. We rejoice in the glorious splendour of your majesty for you have given in us a share with St Thomas in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this passing age they proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Choose as lights in the world they surround our steps as we journey on towards the city of eternal light where they sing the everlasting song of triumph in communion with the angels and archangels and all who have served you on earth and worship you now in heaven. We raise our voices to proclaim your glory for ever praising you and singing.
Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. Jesus took the bread. Jesus thanked you, broke it, and gave it to the gathered friends, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. Jesus thanked you and gave it to the friends, saying, All of you drink from this cup, because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So, loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love Jesus too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts, that everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and in one joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our post-communion hymn.
Good to join with you wherever you are. Uh, in two weeks' time, on the 16th, we have our next Celtic service at Rescorla. Slightly different, going to be at 12 noon. Um, it's going to be part of the Rescorla Festival, um, actually giving also a uh, 150th anniversary of the building. Uh, you do need to book in for lunch. Lunch will be at 1 o'clock, it'll be a buffet lunch. Uh, you do need to book in for lunch on that day. Uh, and then the Rescorla Festival will start at 2 o'clock. Uh, but it, it's 12 noon at Rescorla on Sunday the 16th of July. So God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, seen and unseen, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.